For at TV, the world is thinking. The idea is, the concept was a vertical city, a sustainable vertical city, a series of eight stacked neighborhoods. Each neighborhood is made up of 14 levels. So basically it's 14 story buildings uh, stacked on top of one another. And each one of these, uh, each one of these podium areas as you move from stack to stack is really conceived as a park. And Shanghai, as I think many of you know, is a city of parks. And these parks, each one has a 14-story atrium space, which is going to bring fresh air into the building. And it's going to work like a traditional park, and that it's going to be places to eat, entertainment venues, places to rest, and to really try to create a sense, a sense of uh, community. It is really difficult to get your arms around a building of this size. Uh, what's interesting about this particular building is that this building, unlike Maury's Tower, uh, and, and unlike uh, the uh, Skidmore building, Jin Mao Tower, is that this one will be open to the public. And all these public parks will be open. And so it will be basically an open kind of format. It has an intelligent skin. It is, as I said, uh, two layers of glass. It's actually two curtain wall systems. Uh, we actually designed a frit pattern, uh, modeled a frit pattern over the entire building. So every the frit pattern changes from pane to pane as you move around the entire building. It's designed to minimize heat gain and to maximize daylighting and views. You can imagine with a building of this size, one of the challenges that we really had was trying to model what it's like looking through two curtain wall systems when at some points they're five feet away and other points they're 30 to 35 feet away. Visually what happens, you start to get reflections from the outer curtain wall system to the inner one. Got wind turbines at the top of the building. This is really more symbolic I think in a lot of ways. Uh, there's enough uh, energy that's going to be created to basically run all the exterior lighting in the building and much of the lighting in the park areas. We're utilizing geothermal energy, geothermal extraction system. Uh, the building's HVA system, HVAC is designed to, with a tri-generation recapture system for, and an ice plant. We build an ice plant uh, actually in the basement of the building for daytime cooling. The, the savings from these systems right now, uh, and our, we're having uh, Guy Battles helping us and COPEX and a number of other sustainable design consultants, it's anticipated to save about anywhere between three and five million annually. Uh, and the energy consumption of the building right now, we're shooting for a reduction of 35% to 40% over a conventional building. Just in terms of water efficiency, uh, we're going to harvest rainwater, recycle gray water, we're looking at black water, and yes, it is housed with low consumption urinals as well. Uh, those are the simple kind of things. At this point in time, uh, we believe the water consumption is going to be reduced by a minimum of 40% over a conventional design. That is 675, 675 million liters annually is what we're looking at right now, or about 245 Olympic-sized swimming pools. I think what's the most interesting and is when you have this, this actually one cylindrical building with an outer skin that turns. And so the question is, how much did we want it to turn? Part of it was symbolic, but much of it was really driven by what is the most efficient form. And as we started to model the different forms, a couple things happens as you turn the outer skin, because the outer skin is triangular, it distorts along the edge of the building visually, so it looks like the building is beginning to wave. So that was a consideration. We went through the whole process of wind tunnel testing. And when we did the testing, what we realized is that we could reorient the building in a different direction, actually move it around slightly, and we twisted the building to, uh, I guess it was about 120 degrees. And currently at this point, and we just finished the structural work, we just added a couple of uh, additional bell trusses on the building. But right now the structure is gonna use 32 to 35% less materials than a conventional tower, and that's primarily concrete and steel. So it's a huge savings, because the primary lows, what you're dealing with in a tower of this size are wind loads. That's really the biggest issue that you have to deal with. 